Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need to start filling these coaching vacancies. Let's talk about it. There's a lot of people available. There's a lot of people on the market. I know y'all heard it was that flip was let go from um, Jacksonville. A lot of stuff going on, man. We need to make sure we in the mix. You know what I'm saying? A lot of stuff going on. I see the potential. Like, like a lot of people getting put out of the playoffs. A lot of coaches going to be looking to find somewhere else to go. You know what I'm saying? We need an offensive coordinator. What are we going to do? We haven't made a move yet. We haven't made a move yet. What are we waiting for? Now, now listen, you're going to have your offensive coordinator in place before the draft come. I'm going to tell you that right now. You're going to have somebody in place before the draft come. But it's like, I'd rather have it a little sooner. You know what I mean? I, I need to know who we looking at. Let's look at this guy's resume. Who we looking at bringing in here? You know what I mean? That's what it boils down to. Who we looking at bringing in here? Things got to change. Now, if I'm the Philadelphia Eagles, I'm looking at this from from from, from all angles, because you, you listen, guys are getting released, guys are being fired. Jim Caldwell for OC and John Fox for defensive coordinator. We don't need a defensive coordinator, man. The thing about def the the thing about the defensive coordinator position is simple, man. Dude is coming back. Jim Schwartz is coming back. He didn't get the job in Cleveland. I expect Jim Schwartz to be back. And you, re you really can't say Jim Schwartz really failed. You know what I'm saying? You can't say he failed. You can't say he failed. Every time it was time for January football to come around, Jim Schwartz was a man amongst boys in that department. So I'm not going to really say Jim, Jim Schwartz failed. You know what I mean? But what I am going to say is that a lot of people are being um, big pain. What up? What up? What up? A lot of people are being moved around. We got a lot of vacancies. This is just another vacancy that's open now. You know what I mean? What's up? Love from my island town. You know, I, I, I know a lot about island town, man. Shout out to my guy out there. My guy live out there. You know what I mean? What's going on, everybody? You know what I mean? We got vacancies to fill. We need a wide receiver coach. We need an offensive coordinator. Now we need a defensive back coach. It's crazy because, you know, Corey Undlin didn't get fired. Corey Undlin didn't get fired. Can I get a wrench? Uh, I got you. We're going to reserve the wrench passing towards the end. Corey Undlin didn't get fired. You know what I'm saying? Corey Undlin just left for a promotion. Now, you, you know, you know, it's beyond me how you could fire the wide receiver coach and not the defensive back coach because those two things kind of go hand in hand. Not hand in hand, but those two guys, I mean, those positions struggled the same. So it's kind of, you know, it's, it's kind of beyond me. Brian Dawkins, if he's interested in coaching. I mean, can Brian Dawkins coach? You know what I'm saying? Can Brian Dawkins coach? You know what I mean? We know a lot of ex-players are good at being players, but can they coach? You know what I'm saying? LB, I know you. Well, I probably know you too then. Champ Bailey for defensive back coach. No, we need somebody who knows how to develop talent. We don't need to know. We don't need nobody. We don't need nobody coming in to be our defensive back coach, who we know is great as a player. Can you develop talent? And I heard. And I heard John Flip. Uh, Del Del Flip, man, he got released. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people are saying that this dude going back to college football. Chris Richard as defensive coordinator. Wasn't Chris Richard a defensive coordinator? And uh, Dallas, I don't like this. I don't like Chris Richard. No disrespect to Chris Richard. I don't want nobody with a losing pedigree. And the thing about this with Chris Richard is this. He'll make sure that he, he, he'll he tell you every weakness and flaw about the Dallas Cowboys. He was a DB's coach. Oh, he was a DB's coach? Can he develop talent? That's what it's about for us, man. A hey, prayer, man. Thank you, nation. Jaguars got rid of John John Fel, John DeFilippo. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. I know, man. I would bring back a I would bring him back if we could. You know what I mean? He did a real good job. That's that. Yeah, yeah. 17th in York. Yep, that's what that is where I'm from. McCow McCow can retire. Eh, eh. He can retire. You know who I like as a backup quarterback? I like um who do I like as a backup quarterback right now? I like Mariota. I'll bring Mariota to be the backup. 
I'll bring in Mariota to be the backup for sure. What happened with Sutfeld? I don't know. Why they leaving? They leaving because the pressure is on. They leaving. They, they, they leaving because the pressure is on. How much do you want? How much does who want? Mariota? I don't know how much Mariota want. I don't know. I think RJ three gonna stay right where he at. I think he's gonna stay right where he at. But but like but like Mariota, if his numbers called, Mariota could could win a game for you. Mariota price gonna be too high. I don't know. I don't know what his price is going to be, but I like Mariota. I, I like it because Tannehill has earned the starting spot. I don't think there's no going back. I'm supposed to be conducting performance evaluations for my directs uh, report managers, but I have to get get that LB time in first. They could wait. What's up? LT, you know you already know, man. I appreciate you, LT. You ain't, you know, you know, handle your, ha handle your work, though, man. Handle your work at all times. Handle your business. Um, WBRB, what is that? Low key happy Unlin gone. I'm happy Unlin gone too. I'm happy Unlin. Well, see, see, Unlin, he just felt the pressure, and it was an opportunity for him to get a um, a promotion. Come on, bro. Unlin should have been worse. People gone. Wide receivers can have down years. They dropped a lot of passes, and we failed to develop some talent that was already right under our nose until late in the season. But the cornerbacks have been getting their, they're getting their heads chopped off two seasons in a row now. You know what I mean? Two seasons in a row. This is what y'all got to understand, man. It's not about who's going to be the backup quarterback moving forward. Because I don't think that'll ever happen again for our franchise, the backup quarterback going out there and finishing the job. I don't think it'll ever happen again. That's not likely to happen. It don't matter. We might as well don't have no backup. If Carson goes down, that game is lost. Unless we've blown him out already. So it don't matter who the backup is. But I would like to have Marcus Mariota. You know what I'm saying? I would like to have Marcus Mariota. Fitzpatrick, I, I kind of like Fitzpatrick. Uh, Flip was available. Let's go uh, Let's go by Jacksonville today. He available, man, but I don't know, man. I hope he come back. I hope he come back. You know what I mean? We got three positions that need to be filled. These are important positions. The wide receiver coach is important. I'm going to tell you why the wide receiver coach is important. You need your wide receiver coach and you need your um, you need your wide receiver coach and you need your offensive coordinator in place. And, and you need your defensive. Listen, you need your you need all three of these guys in place before the combine. All three of these guys must be in place before the combine because these are positions of need. We're going to draft a defensive back this year. We're going to draft a wide receiver this year. How are you going to do that without having the wide receiver coach, without those position coaches in place? Giving input on what makes a wide receiver good and why we should draft them. Now, I don't know what the hell the wide receiver coach did last year. I don't know what he looked at when he saw Ortega Whiteside, the first couple practices. Because you, you know what? You know what? That's 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 kind of misleading. I believe Arthur Whiteside can get separation against our cornerbacks in practice. So he probably looked amazing in practice, because our cornerbacks, everybody gets separation on them. But one thing that's been consistent is that the cornerbacks have been up and down. So I'm not surprised by Corey Underlin's, you know, deciding to leave because he was going to get the boot next year anyway. You know what I mean? Everybody want to make this excuse. We need elite talent. We need elite talent. I've seen these guys play elite level, elite. I've seen these guys play at an elite level in the playoffs. They just don't do it in the months leading to the playoffs. Come on. Last three seasons, the Philadelphia Eagles had an elite, elite defense in the playoffs. And it's secondary. He was burning Darby and they thought he was great. That's what I'm saying. Anybody could cook Darby. We, bought, we botched that pick. Should have took McLaurin or Metcalf. See, I don't even want to talk about DK Metcalf with y'all because y'all, I'm, I'm mad at it. When I was screaming Metcalf last year at the combine, y'all looked at me like I was crazy. When I was screaming Hollywood Brown last year at the combine, y'all looked at me like I was crazy. You know what I'm saying? Y'all was happy with Ortega Whiteside and y'all never even heard of him. Elite talent DBs, yeah, see the Rams, how, how'd that work out? That's what I'm saying. All the times you don't need elite, uh, elite level DBs. We don't know how to draft. We better figure it out. We better figure it out. We better figure it out. I know how to draft, but I never even did it. If you gotta put, if, if, if I'm the one for an organization that's interviewing these guys that's being drafted, I'm not looking for the guy who don't believe in himself who's telling me all the right answers. I'm not looking for that guy. 
Period. I'm not look. I'm not looking for that guy, man. I'm looking for the guy who gonna tell me something like this. I just feel like nobody could cover me. I'm ready to learn and I'm ready to get it on. I just don't feel like nobody could cover me. I know I got a lot to learn. Now I'm, I'm looking for somebody like that. I want a wide receiver that's gonna beg for the ball. That since, since when? Since T.O. Come on, what up, Don Don? I'm looking for somebody that's gonna say I'm not getting the ball enough. You know what I'm saying? Henry Ruggs look a little too small for me, man. We talking about the same dude. We need to get another Joe Douglas. Uh, I can see that. So let's go get AB. I don't know why they ain't go. I don't know why nobody ain't touching AB right now. Bro, decaf was available when uh, we drafted Whiteside. That was the biggest disappointment. We need to draft better this year. DK was available, and I think Hollywood Brown was available, if I'm not mistaken. But DK was DK was definitely available. Rugs is Tyreek 2.0 though. Okay, so when y'all say people are when y'all say people are 2.0, it's six foot 190 small. No, it ain't small. Six foot and a buck ninety ain't small at all. I didn't know he was that tall or that big. But when y'all say somebody is already the 2.0 version of a good player, you're insinuating that he's better than Tyreek. So to say that Rugs is Tyreek Hill 2.0, he's an upgraded version of Tyreek Hill. No, he ain't even play a snap in the NFL. I'm not about to be lusting over these college players, man. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to sit here and say none of them college players are better than nobody that I've seen do it at the highest level. They got something to show me, man. You would have taken Brown over Dillard? Hollywood Brown over Dillard? Yeah. I would have taken Hollywood Brown over Andre Dillard. I'm going to tell you why. For, for, at, at first, I would have just did it without even knowing anything. Andre Dillard barely got playing time. All they did was, all they did was run Jason Peters into the ground. And get false start after false start after false start. Andre Dillard is going to be good for us down the line whenever we decide to let go. Listen, the organization already told y'all, already told y'all, we get attached to players. They're attached to Jason Peters. They attached to him. Hollywood Brown would have got playing time. time. You know what I'm saying? He would have got playing time. Come on, man. Andre Dillard. Andre Dillard would have been there. I'm a firm believer in this. Now, I think Andre Dillard is a great first-round pick. I'm a firm believer in this. Andre Dillard would have been there in the second round. I'm telling you, bruh. Andre Dillard would have been there in the second round. We don't draft properly. If, 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 if offensive line is so important to the Philadelphia Eagles, why is Andre Dillard not getting the time he deserves? Why Andre Dillard not getting why Andre Dillard not getting cross-trained? We had other guys go down. Why Andre Dillard didn't get cross-trained to do um, anybody on the rock out of the line's job? Brooks went down. Lane Johnson went down. I don't understand it. I don't understand it, man. That's what I don't get. So, you know what I mean? Texans were uh, te Texans were taking them. Man, Texans could say they taking them all they want. I don't believe Andre Dillard would have. I don't believe Andre Dillard. He probably would have been gone in the first round. I'm not going to say second round, but he would have still been around. He would have still been around. You ain't got to jump to 11 and take Andre Dillard. Now, look at the position that put us in. 10 for 11, whatever pick we had last year. We draft Andre Dillard. We barely use him, and we don't have no skill players left. And we don't have no skill players left. If you was already going to pick a wide receiver, what round did um, Ortega Whiteside get picked in? A second or something like that? If you was already going to pick a wide receiver, why didn't you go for one of the best ones? If you was already gonna pick a wide receiver, why didn't you pick? Why didn't you already pick a good one? That's what I'm saying. If you was if you was gonna already get a wide receiver, why the hell? Why? I don't understand this for the life of me. Why anybody, even the eye test that everybody said he's so good at, what makes you see that Ortega Whiteside is better than DK Metcalf? What makes you see it? What scout? What 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 was the scout looking at? Because I watched DK Metcalf combine. If y'all remember last year, I was super high on this dude. I watched DK, DK Metcalf whole combine. His bench was out of this world. His speed was out of this world. You know what I'm saying? Everything. Strong hands, physical, big. I watched it. He looked like a freak of nature on the field. He looked like what Derrick Henry looked like at his combine. What on earth would make you not take DK Metcalf and take Artega Whiteside? Did you, watch, did you watch him in college? He didn't look that bad in college, and he played alongside another elite wide receiver. 
we all agree that JJ uh, Whiteside was the reach. Nobody is arguing that JJ over Metcalf, JJ over Metcalf at the point. I don't know what nobody's arguing. I'm saying this, man. I just don't understand. I don't understand what's the point of that reach. We can't draft. Period. That was like one of the worst reaches ever. And we all gave JJ Ortega Whiteside the time to see. Maybe it was something didn't see. But sometimes you got to be able to judge things at face value, man. If this guy is an animal, you're supposed to pick him up. You're supposed to pick him up. If you'd rather have a wide receiver than an elite old lineman, we'll never agree on that. That's not what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying I'd rather have a wide receiver over an elite old lineman. I'm saying that what's the point of drafting an elite old lineman if you're not going to use him? If you're not going to use him? It would have benefited our team more last year to draft a wide receiver because we went down that wide receiver. Andre Diller couldn't catch no balls for us when we went down that wide receiver. Jason Peters got all the time that Andre Diller got. All the time because he refused to retire. Same thing that Darren Sproles would have did. He would have took all that time away from Boston Scott. You could draft an elite offensive lineman, but use your first round pick. I don't understand that. Use Use him. Wasted time and money on Peters. But Peters wasn't actually that bad. You know what I mean? Use your pick. You could have had Dillard and DK Metcalf, right? You could have had Dillard and DK Metcalf the way it lined up. The drafting wasn't that good last year to me. Dillard is the only bright spot. Mock draft. It's a little too early for the mock draft, but I'm working on something. Lord Brunson, people have problems with context. I mean, I don't think everybody got problems with context, but you know what I mean? That's why we talk about these things so we get a better understanding. You were one of the main ones who loved the wide receiver court this season. Everybody loved the wide receiver group this season. I'm going to tell you why. Because this season, the wide receiver group started off with Alshon Jeffrey. The wide receiver group started off with Deshaun Jackson. It started off with Nelson Aguilar in the slot. And it started with J.J. Ortega Whiteside just getting in where he fit in. When those guys went down, Nelson Aguilar became the number one guy. Nobody wants that. Nobody wants that. The whole world was excited about the possibilities of the, the whole world was excited about the possibilities of the wide receiving core in the beginning of the season. But they didn't stay healthy. They didn't stay healthy. Now, D.K. Metcalf could have helped them out once they start getting unhealthy. So hell yeah, I was excited about the wide receiver core last year. I'm, I'm big on Alshon Jeffrey. I know a lot of people don't like Alshon Jeffrey. Alshon Jeffrey, I feel like is a possession guy. He, he, he probably not the fastest guy. But Alshon Jeffrey and Deshaun Jackson healthy with Zach Ertz and Dallas Goddard under the middle. I was in heaven. I was in heaven. I was in heaven with the possibilities of that. In heaven. Go down. And it turned us into a horizontal offense. You know what I mean? And then, but 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 Carson Wentz was able to shine. JJ was hurt the full season. Like, come on. JJ, who's JJ? Ortega Whiteside was hurt the, the whole season. JJ was hurt the full season. Hurt people don't play. He played a lot this season. And he dropped and he dropped a lot of passes. And he barely got separation. Ankle bro. Well, if your ankle hurt that bad, JJ could have moved to the side and we, we could have been saw the emergence award. We could have been saw if he had foot and ankle issues, he could have sat this one out and we could have been saw the emergence award. He also didn't have a good wide receiver coach. I agree with you there. JJ didn't have a good wide receiver coach. I agree with you there. I agree with you there. But it's some things that I saw from JJ that ain't really on the coach. A lot of the times, a lot, a lot, the offer, JJ was on the field a lot. This year. Like he's a rookie, a rookie with 10 catches, bruh. I'm not, I'm not about to, look, 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 look. I'm not about to spoon feed or baby no football player. A rookie with 10 whole catches. 10 catches. He had more than enough opportunity being on that football field. He was on the field. You can't say he didn't get no time. You can't say he didn't get no playing time. You can say that about Dillard because he didn't get the playing time. He had 10 catches in the whole season. 
You know who else was a rookie? The guy in Tennessee who they don't talk about like that. What's his name? A.J. Brown. He had 1,000 receiving yards. 1,000 receiving yards. And they still in the playoffs. You know who else was a rookie? Hollywood Brown. You know who else was a rookie? D.K. Metcalf. There's like every, every rookie wide receiver, mostly every rookie wide receiver who got as much playing time as J.J. White, J.J. Ortega White so I got more than 10 catches. Come on, bro. He ducked. Miss Stovall, you took the words right out of my mouth. The game that I was at, the, the, the Washington Redskins game, I watched this guy run the wrong route. The game where, um, where, where Goddard took the, took the one-headed passing on the sideline, was that the Redskins game? Dude, ran, dude runs the completely wrong route a lot. He does that a lot. So he still needs some development. He still needs some development. Now, that's one person, whether, whether you want to agree with me or not, Debo Samuels is another rookie who putting in work. That's one person who I believe that would have still been there to like the fifth, fourth round. He needs to be on the practice. He needed to be on the practice squad, bro. But since he got ankle and foot injuries and all this other stuff, he why, why, come on, why didn't the training staff say he's not good to go? He's not going to be useful. We could have been brung Ward up. We could have been brung Ward up. Come on. Come on, man. The Philadelphia Eagles need to do better, man. The Philadelphia Eagles need to do better. You don't draft no offensive lineman and don't let him play. You see what I'm saying? You don't do that, bro. You don't draft no offensive lineman and don't let him pass, don't let him play. And you don't draft a wide receiver and throw him out there and just tell him to figure it out. He need to be developed. He don't even... It look like he don't know the playbook. Matt Collins took Greg Ward's spot. <laughs> Matt Collins took Greg Ward's spot. Yes, he did. He did. Mac, Mac Hollis did take Grant Ward's spot. But who fought? But who fought is that? That's a good point, Rue Girl. Who fought is that though? Why the hell would an offense? Why, why the hell would a wide receiver core consist of a Mac Hollins? Mac Hollins don't even want the ball. Why would a wide receiver core consist of a Mac Hollins and an Ortega Whiteside? Come on, it don't even make sense. The wide receiver coach got himself fired. You put a guy out there who Mac Hollins wants to be a gunner. Mac Hollins wants to be a gunner. He don't want to be a wide receiver. He just want to run on the field and get some cardio barefoot, whatever the hell he was doing. And, and Ortega Whiteside don't know what the playbook it look like. Why the hell would they both be on the field at the same time? Why would they both be on the field at the same time? Come on, bro. I want to see the notes that some of these guys had on DK Metcalf. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? But just, but just, I agree. JJ Whiteshot probably was a mistake, but I'll take Diller in the first round, 10 out of 10. You know, you know, I can't, I can't argue, I can't argue with the Diller pick. I cannot argue with the Diller pick at all. I totally agree with you. Andre Diller was, a, was, a, was the correct pick because Andre Diller didn't change what you could have possibly did with the Ortega Whiteside pick. So I'm, a, I'm in a hundred percent agreement with you there. You should have had Andre Diller and you should have had DK Metcalf. Or you should have had somebody else at wide receiver other than, Ortega Whiteside. Now, I'm not giving up on Ortega Whiteside. It took me a while to give up on Nelson Aguilar. I'm not giving up on Ortega Whiteside yet, but somebody need to come in there and help this guy develop. Help him develop. You know what I mean? Somebody got to come in there and help this dude develop. Like, what the hell was the coaches doing? My mans don't know the playbook. My mans don't know the playbook. You know what I'm saying? Seems like it. Okay, John Nelson. If it seems like I'm giving up on Ortega Whiteside, then... Nine times out of ten, I probably should. He had ten catches last year. He's not going to get the opportunity this up this upcoming season that he got last year. He should have been a star last year. If you was going to be a star, that was his chance, bruh. It was no Deshaun Jackson. It was no Alshon Jeffrey. Him and Nelson Aguilar and Mac Hollins. Mac Hollins got himself cut. Now, if Ortega Whiteside would have put up a performance like Mac Hollins put up, they both would be cut if Ortega Whiteside wasn't in his rookie year. They both would be cut. Come on. Y'all y'all sound like y'all y'all the type of guys who went. I gave up on Mac Hollins immediately. I learned my lesson. After like the second season, I was done with Mac Hollins. I knew that's all he wanted to be. He's a rookie. Bro, rookies don't do good. R rookie wide receivers don't excel in the NFL. Nelson Aguilar was terrible before Grove was hired as rookie wide receiver. We gave... Uh, we have to give J.J. some... J.J. got a chance. They ain't cut him. They ain't cut him. He got a chance. He got a chance. But I'm not going to sit here... Like, the he's a rookie thing, it don't mean anything to me. 
It don't mean nothing to me. Because Dillard showed elite level abilities as a rookie. Hollywood Brown. I, can't, I, I told you to list to the rookies. Debo Samuels. I told you to list to the rookie wide receivers this season alone who put in work. He's a rookie. Don't matter, bruh. As, as a college student, you still got to know the playbook, right? You still got to know the playbook. The man didn't know the playbook 90% of the time he was on the field. So this wide receiver coach that they that they bring in here, man, has to be able to hold this dude accountable, bruh. Got to be able to hold him accountable. I didn't see no strong points Ortega Whiteside game last year. Did y'all know in Stanford he was the one? Of, he was the best wide receiver in the nation at high point in the ball. The best wide receiver in the nation at high point in the ball. I didn't see him be able to block at an elite level. I didn't see elite route running. I didn't see elite elite speed. I didn't see anything that I could take from this season and say he's going to be okay. He needs somebody to develop him, or he got to go to the practice squad, or they're doing him a disservice by not putting him in the practice squad. Seriously. Derek Burnett and Miles Sanders are the only bright spots the past two years, in my opinion. Uh, I'm, not even, I'm not even talking about Miles Sanders, man. Sometimes I forget Miles Sanders is, is, a, is a, a rookie. Miles Sanders was a hit in the draft. Andre Dillett was a hit in the draft. I mean, they didn't draft anybody else. It was so many young star. It was so many young stars on, on, the, on the board when we made some of these picks. It's just beyond me. It just it's just beyond me. It's beyond me, man. Derek Barnett sometimes makes some some bonehead plays, man. You know what I mean? I'm Derek Barnett is useful. DK Metcalf failed drug test. That's why we didn't get him. Okay. Okay. All right. DK Metcalf failed the failed the drug test. That's why we didn't get him. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. Okay. But somebody did though, right? Right, that that like like I didn't hear anything about dude fell in the drug test, bro. Dude got like a two percent body fat. They said he was one of the most in shape wide receivers they ever seen in their life at the at the combine. He fell the physical. That's different. You know what I mean? I mean, God, it was a great pick. Dallas God, it was an amazing pick. That was an amazing pick. I mean, that was an amazing pick. He didn't fill a drug test this season. He did work. Well, you know what I'm saying? He was he, he was the one that put the final stake in us. You know what I mean? I like Randy Moss and Warren Sapp. We didn't get them either. That's, be, that's, that's, that's beyond the point. That's beyond the point. The point that I'm trying to make is this. That we're picking up guys in these drafts as of lately who are basically a waste of playing time. Mac Hollins was around for damn near four years. Mac Hollins was around for four years. And he did nothing. The only highlight you could think of is of Mac Hollins is from 2017 when Carson went through that touchdown pass to him. Mac Hollins has done nothing else. And if you do not, if you do not develop Ortega Whiteside, he will be Mac Hollins 2.0. Since everybody wants to say these college dudes is and such 2.0 Mac Hollins and JJ Ortega Whiteside are twins if you do not develop that a special team specialist you already know if you do not develop this dude this dude will be wasting and taking valuable snaps from somebody we can get in free agency something come on bro I don't care if you got a little dance in your crowd favorite if you play wide receiver run your routes and catch the ball he was drafted in like the third or fourth round. Matt Collins, yeah, he was drafted in like the third or fourth round. But he got a lot of playing time with the Philadelphia Eagles last season. Like, okay, all right, think about it like this. When somebody goes down in the NFL, that's often the opportunity for somebody else to shine. The people who believe in themselves are going to shine, and other people are not going to shine. Boston Scott could have came off the practice squad and done anything. Nobody would have blamed him. Nobody would have cared. Oh, you're a practice squad dude anyway. Andre Ward... He, he, he could I mean, not, not, Ward, Greg, look, look, he could have came out the practice squad and not done nothing. Nobody would have cared. He's a former quarterback. Ortega Whiteside is a high draft pick. A high draft pick. Yeah, I'm thinking about boxing, Andre Ward. He's a high draft pick. His job and Nelson Aguilar's job is to be, is to be able to be the number one guy if you're called upon. Nelson Aguilar got to go. He got to go. He got to go, bro. 
Nelson Aguilar got to go. And Nelson Aguilar has some good times and, and he has some bad times, but he still got to go. He still got to go. Ortega Whiteside can only hope, can only hope to be as productive as Nelson Aguilar once was for us. And, and Nelson got to go. He's a rook. Okay, he's a rookie. Okay, okay, okay. I'm not making no excuses. I'm not making no excuses for our thing of my season. Ten catches, bro. Ten catches. Ten catches. Didn't beg for the ball. Didn't do anything. Didn't slam a helmet. Didn't do anything. Ten catches. Come on, bro. You don't play 16 games to catch 10 passes, bro. Useless, man. Useless. Useless. Like, 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 like when Clowney hit Carson Wentz like that, if you ain't catching the ball, at least, at least, at least go put, push Clowney on the ground or something. At least start a damn riot on the field. At least do something. I'm not with it, bro. I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just not, I'm just not with it. I'm just not with it. And it's not like how many times was he targeted? I could do the numbers and y'all would be, y'all, y'all would be shocked. I'll do the numbers on how many times he was a target uh, targeted. Aguilar is a free agent. He doesn't have a uh, dead cap hit, Rude Girl. Yeah, Aguilar is done. When we paid Aguilar that $9 million last year, that was just for thank you for helping us win the Super Bowl. Aguilar is done. I agree. Sidney has to go. I disagree. I disagree. I disagree. Sidney Jones, Sidney Jones, Sidney Jones is going to be there for a while. Sidney Jones is going to be there for a while. When Ronald Darby leave, Sidney Jones is going to step it all the way up. When Ronald Darby leaves, Sidney Jones is going to step it all the way up. I'm trying to tell you. That, that's, that's, that's how I feel. That's how I feel. I could be wrong. I could be right. When Ronald Darby leaves, and if Jalen Mills leave, Sidney Jones is going to be our number one corner pretty soon. I'm telling you. I'm telling y'all. I'm telling y'all. Ain't nobody going to benefit from a new defensive back coach more than Sidney Jones. Ain't nobody going to benefit from it more than Sidney Jones. Everybody else stuck in their way. Sidney Jones is still willing to learn. He been crapped on. Nobody believes in him. I think Sidney Jones is going to do our thing. If he's our number one corner, God, God help us. I see it in him. I see Sidney Jones and I see Strap and I see Maddox being around. Now, I don't know what's going on with Jalen Mills. I like Jalen Mills. Jalen Mills delete all the Eagle stuff out of his little, um, his, um, his social media accounts. I don't, I don't know if that's a sign or not. You know what I mean? Maybe the Eagles gave him a courtesy like, look, we probably, you, you know what I mean? This is a prove it year for you or something like that. Carson needs to go back to QB camp. Footwork sucks. No, Car I didn't see anything with Carson Wentz's footwork. The only the only one thing Carson Wentz needs to work on this offseason is goddamn. Do I got some in my car? I got some right here in my car. This is what Carson Wentz needs to work on right here. Shout out to Alpha Grips. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to, shout out to the good people at Alpha Grips. Carson Wentz needs to get in one of these and strengthen his grip. So the goddamn football is not easy to smack out of his hand. That's what Carson Wentz needs to work on. His goddamn grip. You know what I mean? His goddamn grip. It's like, it's like, it's like, it's like, it's, it's like he missed his whole teenage years. Come on, man. You know how you 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 know how you know how men got good grips? You know how males got good grips from stuff they used to do when they was teenagers? I'm gonna leave it at that. Boy, boy need to go back to being 17 and work on his grip. Cause the fumble's just the fumble's just excusable. It's just inexcusable. It's just inexcusable. You think we signed Jink? Better, better bring back Jink. I like Jink. He was fine last two years as long as he was uh was on a Julio Jones type. You put him on a burner and he's toast. Uh, he ain't about that. This again. J Trap Eagles have a type. It's called accuracy, bro. That's his only because Carson Wentz is an accurate thrower of the football. Look, did y'all? Okay, okay, okay. If you just got here in the chat, if you just got here in the chat, I was talking about the wide receivers and how bad they sucked. Now, when you got wide receivers that played as poor as our wide receivers this season, you're going to it's going to make your quarterback look bad sometime. When you got guys running the wrong routes, what would you what would you prefer Carson Wentz to do? Hold on to the ball and pray somebody get open, get sacked and get hurt, or just throw it somewhere to where nobody can catch the ball. He did that a lot last year, and it made him look inaccurate. It made him look inaccurate. Because it's like, okay, the play broke down, the defense is bearing down on me, I just got to throw it. I just got to throw it somewhere. You got to throw it away sometime. You got to take it. Carson Wentz, dog, 
Carson Wentz took so many he took so many incompletions to his completion percentage because of these wide receivers this year. So many incompletions, bro. He just chalked it up and threw the ball away. Now you seen what happened when Greg, um, you seen what happened when Ward and all those guys came into the lineup who was able to get separation and catch the ball. Come on, accuracy? Did you see the game winners that Carson Wentz was throwing towards the end of the season? He ain't got no accuracy issues when he's throwing the Ertz, do he? Ertz knows how to get open. He ain't got no accuracy issues when he's throwing the Goddard. All times. If you get open, you catching a dime. Come on, man. Dudes can't get open, though. Dudes can't get open. Dudes cannot get open, man. I played football before, man. If somebody can't get open... And the, and, and the defense is blitzing and the defense is bearing down on you. You got to throw it away. But you can't throw it away when you're inside the pocket because that's an intentional grounding. So you got to throw an incomplete pass. We didn't start rolling Carson Wentz outside of the pocket until late in the season. You can't throw the ball away from inside the pocket. You got to throw it incomplete. Why do you think smart guys like Tom Brady throw it in the dirt? When screens break down, they just throw it near the person. Carson Wentz needs to work on holding on to the ball. That's it. Accuracy is on the money. If Carson Wentz was so inaccurate, he would have had double-digit interceptions. He would have had double-digit interceptions. If he's so inaccurate. This is McNabb 2.0. Good, not elite. Wentz McNabb 2.0, huh? Okay. I, we ain't here talking about Donovan McNabb. Donovan McNabb. Just ignore these dudes saying Winston's isn't good. They just trolling. I'm not, it's not about ignoring them. See, look, look, look. I can ignore you or I can take you to school. Since I got a platform to talk about the Philadelphia Eagles, I'm gonna just take you to school. I'm not gonna ignore you. Wentz is Bradford 2.0. 2, Bradford 2 this is crazy. Now, now we slandering Wentz. Now we slandering Wentz. Now we believe that something is wrong with Carson Wentz. You know? I challenge some of you guys that I challenge some of you guys to have some of these life experiences. Just have some life experiences. They are they out of pocket. They're out of pocket. Let's just just I challenge some of you guys to have some of these life experiences. I I I don't I don't know how I don't know how I have an experience for every dumb thing a lot of people say. But I had a concussion before. In Afghanistan, I got a concussion. You gotta read your dog tags after you get a concussion. Couldn't do it. Couldn't tell you my social. You trained to know your social when you're in the military. But when you get a concussion, you don't know anything anymore. You don't know anything. He had a concussion. He didn't have an injury to his extremities or his limbs. He had a concussion. You cannot play with a concussion. You can't play with a concussion. You know what I'm saying? You know who else had a lot of concussions and still, and still played their sport of choice? Muhammad Ali. A lot of concussions for Muhammad Ali. Before Muhammad Ali passed, Muhammad Ali could barely hold his hand still from still taking blows to the head. Come on, man, y'all got y'all got y'all got y'all got to up. If the if the knee would have tore out, if the knee would have tore out again, I understand where you're coming from. Come on, man. Boxing is a concussion sport. Football is a concussion. Sport. You know how many unreported concussions happen every Sunday during the football season? He was healthy this season until a guy took a cheap shot at his head. He was completely healthy. You know what I'm saying? Completely healthy. Next year, we'll be going to say if he uh, if he get hurt again. Well, there's nothing to say. It depends on how he gets hurt. It depends on how he gets hurt. You know what I mean? It depends on how he gets hurt. Injuries happen. In injuries happen all the time. Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers had a couple concussions. Injuries, but nobody don't do that to Aaron Rodgers though. Carson Wentz is still on his rookie deal. Cheap shot took him out of the game. I can't even be mad at that. But every year, no, the cheap shot only happened this year. This year, he played. A lot of y'all don't know this. He played. He he played the whole season his rookie year. He played the whole season his rookie year. Carson Wentz is the only quarterback. In the history of the NFL, that, that that college injuries roll over to. Are y'all gonna do that to, to, to Tua? He got his hip replaced. 
because of an injury he sustained in college. Are we going to see the Tua? Come on. The only, I, I've never seen nothing like it. I've never seen nothing like it. Carson Wentz's college injuries matter to us in the NFL. I'm signing up for wide receiver next year. Go ahead. Godspeed. I'm two seconds of, of wanting to trade Wentz. I knew you were in the military currently in Colorado with the Army. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. What base you on? Why everything is why 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 everything is about Carson getting hurt? He was recovering from his back injury in the preseason. You know what I mean? L listen, man. Oh, Fort Carson. I've never been to Fort Carson. Carson Wentz. Car listen, Carson Wentz. Uh, Eagles Nation two seconds away from trade and you, sis. They bugging, rude girl. They bugging. They bugging. You going to trade Carson Wentz and do what? Trade Carson Wentz and do what? what, what what's, what's the plan of attack once you trade Carson Wentz? Bring back Nick Foles? What's the plan of attack? You expect his brain not to knock against his skull? Like I said, I had I had I had a concussion, man. I had a concussion. Some 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 people do. I know a dude who got a concussion one time. He checked himself into like a mental institution. He didn't know what was wrong with him. He just had a concussion. He was so scared that he couldn't remember anything. He was so freaked out from the concussion. He didn't he didn't know where he was at. He didn't know where he was at, man. Got a concussion and thought somebody slipped him something. That, that, head injuries is crazy, man. I wouldn't trade Wentz for any player in the NFL. Even Mahomes has even Mahomes has faults, and I don't know that. I mean, the only the only the only person some of y'all front like you're smart, then you reveal yourselves. We need to use Howard more. We need to keep Howard to use him. I don't think we're smart enough to keep him. What QBs would, would you choose over Wentz? Which quarterbacks would I choose over Wentz? Over Wentz? It's only one, really. It's only one quarterback that I would choose over Carson Wentz. It's only one, and it, it, it's it only got to be Patrick Mahomes. It just got to be Patrick Mahomes, man. It's only one. It's only one. It's only one. If you asking me to be real, it's only one. Pat My bad. I got a phone call about some shoes. Wilson, no, we're not frozen. We back. I'll take Wilson. I like Wilson. Wilson, Wilson is actually, Wilson is like a top three guy for real, for real, man. You can't front on you can't front on nothing that Russell Wilson do, bro. Wilson the top three guy, but it's it's it's, it's my heart. But I'm not taking Wilson though. But Wilson is real close. It's Claire Claire is Mahomes. It's 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 my it's Mahomes, man. It's Mahomes. Did y'all see the game yesterday? Did y'all see the game yesterday? It's Mahomes, bro. It's Mahomes, man. Mahomes make throws that only I. Uh, Mahomes and Wilson, and Carson Wentz make some crazy throws. Y'all in denial. What we in denial about? Let's talk. This is open forum. We trade Wilson. He could have been an eagle. I like Wentz. I really do, but I'm tired of this. My man, Clowney should have went to jail. Clowney, Clowney committed some type of assault against a man. You know what I mean? It was a cheap shot. It was a cheap shot. That thumbnail. Andy Reid needs a Super Bowl. You know what, man? You know what? As I'm as I'm as I'm talking about Andy Reid right now, we can talk about Andy Reid for a minute. Now, I'm this type of guy. I don't want nobody to win a Super Bowl for my team. I don't care if Andy Reid won a Super Bowl or not. He's not the Eagles coach no more. But 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 you know, this team got Shady on it. They got Andy Reid on it. You know what I mean? I'm kind of I'm kind of I'm kind of rooting for Andy Reid. I'm kind of rooting for Andy Reid. I just feel like that. If the Titans beat the Chiefs, the Titans going to the Super Bowl. It's going to be the Titans or it's going to be the uh, Chiefs. So is Aaron Rodgers injury prone? No. They're not going to say Aaron Rodgers injury prone. Nobody in sports media will ever say Aaron Rodgers injury prone. Nobody in sports media will ever say Aaron Rodgers is injury prone. Was Drew, you, you, know, you know what I'm saying? Nope, nobody will say that. They love Aaron Rodgers to death. 
It's like Aaron Rodgers birthed a lot of these a lot of these guys. Titans and Chiefs will be as good as uh, a good a good game though. Yeah, yeah, I'm counting on that one for sure, Ruger. I'm counting on that one. Foles had more injuries in the NFL than Wentz. Brady, Breeze, and Rodgers been injured multiple times in multiple seasons. So will you say they injury prone? No, they won't. They won't say they injury prone. There's only two people they tried to give the injury prone the injury prone talk to. They tried to give it to um, who got it the worst? Andrew Luck. Andrew Luck and Carson Wentz. But Andrew Luck missed like years. Carson Wentz played in 87 percent of the games. 87 percent. Carson Wentz only missed eight games in his, in, his, in his career. He only missed eight games in his career. You know what I'm saying? I don't understand it. Didn't Deshaun Watson have a season ending season surgery before? I think Deshaun Watson missed more games than Carson Wentz. Nobody not talking about Deshaun Watson being injury prone, though. You see Ty J. Sharp mark, mocking Mark Ingram, yeah? Watson had two ACL injuries. But talking about him being injury prone, no, I'm not signing no OBJ. Deshaun Watson, what is his history? I know he had uh, ACL surgery. I think he had two ACL surgeries, if I'm not mistaken. But we're not talking about surgeries. We're talking about games missed, right? Because that, that counts as being injury prone, right? We're talking about games missed. Carson Wentz missed eight games in his career. Now, if, if, that, if that's the video y'all want next to see who, who up until this point, who missed... X amount of games, I think I went over this before. It's so more people that miss so many more games than Carson Wentz, man. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. And Carson Wentz never played a full, a full college season. Y'all need to stop. Listen, listen. Carson Wentz not in college. He not in college. Okay, he never played a full college season, right? But he played two full NFL ones. He only missed eight games in the NFL. Since college, Carson Wentz has put on muscle, just diet. He not in college no more. He a grown man now with a kid on the way. It's different. It's different. I broke my arm before I went to the Army. The, 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 the Army ain't tell me I was injury prone. It just happened. You know what I'm saying? It just happened. He not injury prone. He missed eight games. Eight games. You see how the media can you see how the media can just tell us something and we start to believe it without looking at this stuff in the proper context? Andrew Luck was injury prone. They, it's gotten so bad. It's gotten so bad that we're taking a man getting a concussion and calling him injury prone. He's not even he's not even prone to concussion. This is first one of his career. Is Deshaun Jackson injury prone? They're never gonna say that about Deshaun Jackson. Julio Jones misses a lot of games. They talk about Julio Jones, the best wide receiver in the, in the league. Come on. Drew Brees missed six games this year. Oh, we had to tape his finger. Come on, bro. I'll shine on A.J. Green. I don't want A.J. Green. Injury prone. Why do you think the media hate the Eagles? I think the media hate the Eagles because we're not going to have it no other way. Sanchez is saying, I love Carson, but if he can't, participate in the postseason what's the point he got cheap shot out of the postseason come on we all know okay let's talk about this in the proper context since we're having a hard time with this this topic right now what's the proper context y'all why was Carson Wentz why was Carson Wentz not why didn't Carson Wentz play in the postseason why didn't Carson Wentz play in the postseason he took a he took a cheap shot that's all we need to talk about then. We have no more. That's it. A dirty hit is why he didn't play in the pro season. In the postseason. He didn't get stung in his toe by a bee. He didn't re-injure his knee. He didn't re-injure his back. He took a dirty hit. Darren Sproles, Darren, Darren Sproles was injury prone and old. Older players get more injured than uh, that don't mean they're injury prone. You got young guy. Julio Jones missed a lot of games, man. Hey, Vladimir, thanks for the donation, bro. Can I get a wrench? Uh, great content as well. I thought you already had one. Take that, like Diddy and them. Dirty hit is the reason why, man. So, you know, we're going to see how things shape up. Carson Wentz is going to Carson Wentz is going to play another full season next year. But this concussion thing is kind of scary to me because once you get that first concussion, it could be crazy, which, which, which is why 
I'm glad Carson Wentz got the concussion when he got it. I know it was the playoffs. That's not what I'm saying. I'm glad he got a concussion. I'm saying that he got a concussion. We were eliminated. And he's able to rest. Had he got the concussion and um, McCown um, was able to pull out the victory and we played against, you know, the Green Bay Packers, he wouldn't have been 100% for that game. And it would have been more pressure. Why can backups win playoff games and Carson Wentz can't? It would have just been too much pressure. You know what I mean? They're not even talking about Carson Wentz not even being able to win a playoff game. You know what I mean? The way they should be talking about Lamar Jackson, who cannot win a playoff game. Because every time the playoffs come around for, what, two straight years, they take away the run from Lamar Jackson to make him throw. The head coach from LSU looking right. I don't want, no, I don't want nobody from college. Somebody else can give him a chance. Drew Brees left the Chargers because injury concerns. Of course. Of course. Brunson, what's the priorities in the draft? Me and 500 was supposed to do a video on that, but the priorities in the draft are simple, man. You gotta look at you gotta look at this from the top from the top down. The Philadelphia Eagles got rid of a bunch of got rid of a bunch of coaches. The priority is to get some of them coaches some new talent to develop. Wide receiver coach is gone. Get that wide receiver coach some new talent. You know what I'm saying? The defensive back coach is gone. You now get that man some new talent. You go and look for some linebackers that could cover. You go look for some linebackers that could cover, man. You know what I mean? I like that dude, Kendricks. I don't know if he's under contract with the Vikings, but boy, he could cover. You know what I mean? Boy, he could cover. Are you on 500 still going to do the collab? Yeah, we're just trying to work out our schedules. You know, we're trying to work out our schedules and we got a time zone confliction. 500 live on the West Coast. So, you know what I mean? I, you got to catch 500 at the right time and vice versa. But I hope to do it on his page next. We have 50 M in cap space. Who are you taking in free agency? Uh, Robbie Anderson. I really like Robbie Anderson. If you can go get Robbie Anderson, you still should draft a wide receiver. I like Robbie Anderson. Um, what cornerbacks are available, though? Darius Slay, Robbie Anderson. I like guys like that. Um, the safety from, um, cause I think McLeod is gone. I like that dude, Joseph. What did he play for the uh, Raiders? Bradbury. Who's that, Miss Stovall? What's your draft wide receiver? I don't know. I didn't really look at all the wide receivers yet, but I feel like the Philadelphia Eagles are going to go with like a Penn State guy or something like that. You know how they do. They like to get guys that's close to the, um, to the area, that know the area. McLeod sucks too small. You tripping. McLeod was out there laying, laying hits. McLeod be laying hits. McLeod is just now getting 100%. From the Panthers, I'm going to look him up. What about Byron Jones from Dallas? Basuda. I'm not picking him. NFL rumors. Jaguars fired um, Filippo. I mean, that's not a rumor. That's the truth. Uh, I would return him as officer. It makes sense. Uh, it kind of makes sense because he knows the system and the players. How do you feel about Trevor, Trevor Williams signing? Who's Trevor Williams? Our safeties are never playing in the right scheme. That's the, that's the, that's the thing, man. That's the thing. You got to look at these things in the proper context, man. What good is it having a Malcolm Jenkins or Rodney McLeod if you're not going to let them all hawks? Uh, a defensive front with Fletcher Cox and 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 and, and um, Jernigan and when Malik Jackson get back, a defensive front like that don't need safety help like that to stop the run. Let these dudes play in their actions, man. That's why, you know... That's, that, that was an upside for me if Jim Schwartz would have left. That was an upside for me, man. Having somebody that can um having somebody that wants to play traditional football and keep them safeties in the back, man, and protect us from the deep ball. Because that cooked us. Can you collab with me? I'm a uh who? I'm a Kyle Gary Stamp Stampeders fan in North Dakota. I don't even know what team that is, but yeah, I, yeah, hit me up, man. We can talk about something. Eagles signed Trevor Williams from the Chargers. Is that the cornerback? You can't zone scheme Mahomes. You can't you you can't you can't zone scheme Mahomes at all. You gotta play man. You gotta play man. So I agree. You gotta play man. You gotta get a good blitz on Mahomes. I didn't know Mahomes was that fast. This is a long chat today. Yeah, every time I be ready to every, every time I be ready to it's a 54 minute joint. Every time I be ready to, um, well, you know, I, I ain't do nothing in the last two days. You know what I mean? I've been working on, you know, fine-tuning some things for the channel. But, yeah, um, we about to cut it short. I'm going to do another video today, too, because I feel like it's a lot of stuff that need to be addressed, like like priorities. 
Like, 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 what's the priorities this off season? Yeah, we got a lot of coaches and stuff like that to hire, but it's it's so much stuff that that need to be addressed. You know what I'm saying? And I want to get it out there. You know, I want to get it out there. You know what I mean? But um, I'm gonna cut. I'm gonna cut this one. It's gonna be a wrap, man. You know. Thank you guys for tuning in. Lunchtime with the bullies. I probably took all y'all lunch. I, I came out here just to get some water. End up taking the whole lunch. But all right, y'all. Priorities are great secondary and coaches. Yeah, we're gonna talk about it. We're gonna, I'm gonna brainstorm on the heavy. Are we uh are we patching up or rebuilding? Patching up, patching up. Subscribe if you're new for sure, man. Make sure you um make sure you hit that like, man. Make sure you tell everybody to subscribe. We're on the quest for 10,000 subs. And we're not gonna stop, man. Lil Brunson back at you with the back at you. Really good conversations today. Really good conversations today, man. You know what I'm saying? We got it in today, man. And I am the best reporting on the Eagles, man. We out.